Hi, this is Sean Bodley with Clear Technologies, and I'm about to perform a demonstration of performing an offline migration from PowerHA System Mirror for AIX version 6.1 to version 7.1.3. But first, let me give an overview of the offline migration process. To perform an offline migration, this actually requires the entire cluster to be offline. So we're going to stop cluster services on all nodes. I'm going to generally perform an AIX update. I'm actually going to skip that step only because I've already got the AIX levels that I need for uh, version 713 along with the CAA file sets. And then I'm going to perform uh, an edit of the Etsy cluster R host file to put in the host name IP addresses, that is something that is unique to version 7.1 as a whole. I'm going to refresh the CLComD daemon and then run a utility called CLMigCheck. And CLMigCheck is also unique to version 7.1. This will actually uh, perform a check of the HA ODM when I choose option 1 to make sure that my HA cluster has no unsupported elements. That way, we know that a, a migration is uh, supported. After running CLMig check uh, on the first node, after having it check the ODM and assuming it comes back with no error messages, then we're going to choose another option, uh, option three. And this is where we tell it uh, if and what cluster IP address we want to use and what disk we want to use for the shared repository disk. Once option 3 is completed on the uh, first node, then I can go ahead and install HA uh, to the latest level. I can just do uh, an update all. Uh, I'll actually uh, do it twice. Um, I'll update all to the base levels and then update to the latest SP. Uh, this technically can be done in one step. Historically, uh, the support statements have always said always perform a migration to the base levels first then put the SPs on top of it. I've done it several times combining uh, both in one step and haven't had a problem but uh, it's generally considered a uh, best, best and supported practice to do it individually. So after updating the first node of my two node cluster then I'll come back and run CL MIG check on the second node and when I run it the second time, uh, it will automatically determine that it's been run previously and find out if it's the last node in the cluster or not to be upgraded. If it is, then at that point it will go ahead and create the CAA cluster for me. Then I can go ahead and perform the uh, upgrade to PowerHA, uh, get that completed, and then after that, uh, all I need to do is restart the cluster. Now. You may be wondering why I don't have to synchronize the cluster. Well, upgrading the cluster upgrades the HA uh, ODM. And also, when we perform a start of the cluster services, it does a verification check anyway. So uh, I don't have to manually run a uh, verify before starting. If, I, if there's a problem, the verification on startup will we'll find it. So. Um, Here's just a list of uh, some other resources. If you're watching this video, you're probably watching it on uh, YouTube anyway. But here's a list of both red books and um, uh, an example of a rolling migration that I have uh, published as well. So with that, I'm going to switch over to my uh, cluster nodes to get ready to perform the upgrade. Okay, so I have my uh, two node cluster, uh, DB2 and web. Uh, currently HA61 SP12. Uh, the resource group is currently online on DB2. So the first thing I'm going to do is stop the cluster on uh, both nodes. Now some of these steps I will uh, intermitt intermittently pause the video uh, just to make it uh, more time efficient. Uh, I promise you, you're not going to miss any steps uh, in between. Okay, 
So my cluster is not running. If I check on uh, both nodes. So now what I'm going to do is that normally once you would have it stopped, you would go ahead and perform an AIX update to get to the uh, levels of um, AIX that you need to support PowerHA version 713. In my case, I've already I've already got it. Uh, I've also got the uh, CAA file sets installed, so I don't need it. Um, so next thing I would do is so let's assume that I I upgraded AIX, installed the CAA file sets, and rebooted is to update Etsy cluster R host file with either the name or the IP addresses that um, uh, resolve to the host name of each node in the cluster. Again, this is unique to uh, PowerHA version 7 specifically. It's actually a, a cluster where AIX requirement. So you can see here I have a DB2 and web already there. So I would update it. Uh, there's only, you only put one entry per line and then you refresh uh, CLComd. And I'm going to do that on both nodes. Okay. So refresh minus CLComd. Okay, so now it doesn't really matter which node I run this on, uh, but I need to run it on one node. Is I'm going to run uh, CL make check for the first time. So I'm just going to run it on uh, DB2. So I get this menu, and the first thing I'm going to do is tell it to check the ODM. Now this comes back and says, hey, I have a disk heartbeat network. Uh, disk heartbeat networks no longer exist in version 7, but it is just a warning. It's not an error. Uh, it's actually quite normal. I expect most people would, would have this uh, configured in their environment, but it's okay. So I just hit enter tells me I have no unsupported elements and I'm okay to continue. So now I'm going to choose option 3 and if I wanted to uh, use multicast and let it pick one for me I would choose option 1. If I want to specify a multicast address I use option 2. Uh, I'm going to do unicast so I choose option 3. And then what it does is it gives me a list of free disks that can be used for a cluster repository disk. Now all this really does is a discovery of the nodes to find out which disks uh, have none for a volume group. It doesn't know if it's uh, proper size. It doesn't know if VGDA information is on there. Um, it's very important that you know that it at least be a 512 gig. Actually, uh, 512 meg. I think I just said 512 uh, gig. So, uh, usually a 1 gig disk shared between every node on the cluster is uh, sufficient for a two node cluster. So in my case I'm going to tell it to choose disk 3 and now I'm done and now I can exit. So this actually uh, populates a, uh, a clmigcheck.txt file and I'll show you that. It's in var clmigcheck And standard just means that the type of PowerHA, standard or enterprise, the repository disk is the PVID of the disk I chose, and then uni for unicast. And this, this file actually gets pushed to every node on the cluster uh, once this is executed. That's how uh, CLMegCheck knows the next time I execute it that it doesn't need to uh, give me the menu. So now I'm going to go ahead and update to PowerHA 7.1. 713 in my case. And always accept new license agreements. And I'll let that run. This will only take a couple of minutes. And once that completes, I'll resume the video. And actually, while this is running, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and show you that the seal make check file also exists on the other node. there it is. Okay, so now I'll wait for this uh, update to finish. And actually when it completes, I'm going to go ahead and uh, update, uh, put on SP1 on top of this as well. 
Okay, so it completed to 7130, and actually that only took about a, a minute and a half. Um, I happen to be a Power 8 box, which is uh, very nice and, and very quick. So now I'm going to change over to uh, SP1 and perform my update again. And as I said in the intro, um, I've done this several times where I've updated both the base and the latest SP at the same time and haven't had problems, but historically the support statement uh, says that you should usually update to the base level first and then put on SPs afterwards. Uh, that's even more important in a offline, or I'm sorry, actually during a rolling migration to update to uh, the base level and then put on the fixed packs later. Now. Uh, I do actually have SP2 that I just loaded. Um, this just came out on November 10th. Uh, this is actually the first time I've performed this upgrade using SP2, so I guess we'll find out if it still works. So I'm done on DB2 now. So back over on web, I need to uh, run CLMeekCheck. Now, I didn't get a menu this time. That's because the CLMIG check uh, text file already exists. And it knows that it's the last node in the cluster. And because it is, it says, now I'm going to go ahead and create the CAA cluster at this point. So if I let that run, if I look over here, I had, I had told it to use HDisk3. And if I, if I keep watching, I'll eventually see CAA VG underscore private appear on uh, HDisk3. So now I can see that the CAA VG private has been created on DB2. And it's actually finished on web as well. It says now I can install the latest version of HA. If I check here, I see V. Uh, CAA VG private. If I do an LS cluster, this is my CAA cluster information. So now I'm going to go ahead and update to PowerHA version 7.1.3 on the last node. And again, always remember to accept new licenses. So again, I'm just going to pause this while this uh, continues to run. And you can see this is almost done, and that just took about a minute 15 seconds. So now I'm going to go put on the latest SP, which again, even though mine says SP1, I really do have uh, SP2 saved in here. You can see that this is also running very quickly. So now the update is complete. So I now have HA713SP2 on both systems. And technically at this point the migration is complete. So now all I need to do is start the cluster. And again, this will take a minute, so I'll just pause shortly. I, I promise you're not going to uh, miss anything. Actually, this is going to give me the OK back pretty quick, so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and let that finish. So now I can see it's uh, starting up. Just tailing the log. And actually, um, after migration, it's normal for this uh, disk heartbeat network to uh, show up as failed. A couple reasons. One, there's one node in the cluster, but two, disk heartbeat doesn't exist anymore. But um, approximately two minutes after 
the uh, cluster starts after being migrated, it will remove that disk heartbeat network automatically. So if I, if I look at my cluster topology, I can still see that I have uh, disk heartbeat here. Okay, it tells me the, uh, the resource group is up. So everything is up and running, but if I keep monitoring my topology output, I will see this disappear. And there's it happens automatically, so there's nothing special you have to do. And there it is. So now it's gone. The cluster is up and running and it's stable. And that actually completes uh, this demonstration of performing an offline migration. So of course. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at sbodily at cleartechnologies.net, and thanks for watching.